the new best friend of my wife, her unusual transformation, and infidelity, cheating wife stories. My wife is a woman who is like an angel, but she has recently developed a friendship with another woman who, in my opinion, is a negative influence on her. This is not meant to be condescending, rather, it is more of a lay down with dogs, get up with fleas kind of situation. Before it happened, I never mentioned her childishness or her extremely radical worldview since, to tell you the truth, I didn't feel any impact from either of those things. Several months ago, my wife started putting pressure on me to perform additional tasks around the house. Even before I receive an immediate UDA, we have already divided up the responsibilities of childcare and duties. While it is true that she has a larger cut than I do due to the fact that she is a stay-at-home mom, I am the one who does the most of the cooking for breakfast and dinner. She is responsible for preparing lunch for both herself and the boys. Once a week, I am responsible for taking out the garbage, do the laundry, and thoroughly clean the bathrooms. In addition, I assist with our boys' homework and other matters. Despite my best efforts, she continues to assert that I am not doing enough around the house and that I ought to be doing more. I attempted to engage in conversations with her and inquired about the expectations she had of me. Specifically, it seems like I should be responsible for tasks and the upbringing of children. This appeared to be going nowhere for a number of months. In her discussion of this topic, she made multiple use of the D-word, which gave the impression of being manipulative. It reached a boiling point when, on a particular evening, we were out with friends and she started complaining about how I never helped out and how I exploit her as a house slave. Her comments sum up the situation well. Okay, I'll admit that I saw red. It is possible that I am to blame for this subsequent part. I did not make any statements that evening, nevertheless, the following day, I requested that my supervisor cut the number of hours I worked due to the stress I was experiencing, and I seized control of everything in the house. First thing in the morning, I prepared breakfast and lunch for the boys, and then I drove them to school. I cleaned the top to bottom of the home, I washed every dish that we had twice, and so on and so forth. My wife was so ecstatic that she couldn't contain her joy and boasted to her friend that she had finally worn me in. She then went about her business without doing anything for almost a month. Then she started whining that she wanted to get her nails done because they were growing in and asked why we never went on dates anymore. She also started asking why we never went on dates. I explained to her that we had to remove that from our budget in order to be able to afford everything else, but that we could absolutely have a movie night in, and I could paint her nails for her. Her dissatisfaction with that solution was clear. As a result, I inquired as to whether or not she would be interested in obtaining a part-time job in order to finance such indulgences. You might have believed that I inquired about her desire to become a member of a cult. After that, she asked me if I could simply pick up additional shifts at work in order to fund her other expenses. She also used the phrase be a man, which I thought to be more than a little offensive. It was then that I asked her if she would be willing to return to the practice of dividing up the housework and other responsibilities, and that is when she started to realize that the two were connected. I was yelled at by her, and she even claimed that I was engaging in financial abuse. She said that I was being manipulative for doing this. I maintained my composure for a while, but now I'm beginning to rethink my strategy since even I have the impression that what I did was a little bit dishonest. Consequently, in response to the pertinent comments, why am I still with her when she treats me in such a manner? This is the extent of my love for her. The following is your text with the corrections. I God, she's an excellent mother and honestly, before she met this friend, we were both blissfully happy to the best of my knowledge. How did she suddenly notice that she wasn't getting her nails done or going out on dates? Did you block the credit card from everything but the grocery store? No. For one, she has her own card, though we do only have one bank account. I set her nail and hair appointments because she hates making phone calls. She asked why I didn't take her out anymore. She could have spent from the card without saying anything, I suppose, but upon budgeting, we would have been in trouble if 300 plus was gone from a night out with friends. More about his wife and their relationship. She had always wanted to be at S before we got together. I try not to say this part because while her two boys are not mine biologically, they are my sons. But being a single mother was incredibly taxing for her because working in the public was too much. I had a bit of experience with being a single father myself. I have a son of my own but I was looking to advance my career and was more than happy to take over the bills for a lesson workload at home. You're paying to raise another man's children. I do not like this comment. Those are my kids, no one else's, 
and regardless of what happens with their mother ever, I hope those boys know that. More about how things have changed. Oh God, I can tell you, but it may be a bit mundane. When we first got married, she would give me shoulder and back massages every day after work and have my favorite music playing when I opened the door. Even though she hates bluegrass, she would make my coffee while I was getting dressed. She made sure to pick up extra crunchy peanut butter from the store, even though I'm the only person who likes it. We would have movie night twice a week with the kids and a date night to ourselves once a week. I have always had trouble sleeping and I don't want to take pills for it, so she always had the bed ready for me, a heating pad already turned on, and my pajamas on the bed. She would run her fingers through my hair until I fell asleep and would wake me up herself instead of the alarm because she knew it put me in a better mood. None of which I asked for. She's a good wife and wanted to do it because she knew that's what I liked, and she did it. Some of this is still true at least it was until I cut down my hours. That was really when she stopped doing anything at all and right now she's pissed, so I'm on the couch, awake, and regretful. Personally, I think she's stubborn. I don't think she even really wants it, she just wants to prove that I would do it if she asks. She has a troubled history with men, and that's why I tend to be forgiving when things do happen. Troubled history with men, it's not something I'm comfortable talking about but believe me when I say what happened was not her fault. OOP is voted NTA update post April 26, 2023. Six days later, I have never been in a situation like this. I, too, had been an addict in the past, although at that time I did not have any children. Please refer to my previous post for further explanation. Note from the editors, I used a variety of search engines and strategies, but I was unable to locate any other last post save the one that was associated with the ID. My wife and I recently had a heated dispute in which she admitted to using two narcotics for a period of several months. The main point is that she admitted to using both substances. We are in the process of arranging for her to check into a rehabilitation facility that she has consented to. Now, how in the hell am I supposed to bring this up to them without them being hostile or judgmental against their mother? That is the question. Or even worse, entering the same mental place that I am currently in? In spite of the fact that my wife wants me to tell them the truth, I am unable to come up with an alternative that will not result in the destruction of their relationship with their mother or the respect they have for her. I have not been able to get a good night's sleep given that all of this information has been made public. Any and all suggestions are greatly welcomed. I would want to thank you in advance. My opinion is that it is dependent on the medication that she was taking at the time. As well as the Adderall and Clonazepam that she was purchasing from her friend. In addition, she admitted that she had experimented with cocaine and a number of other prescription drugs, but she only used cocaine and prescription drugs frequently. Could it have been this acquaintance who introduced her to the concept of radical misandry? Despite the fact that it has been brought to light that she was not being taught misandry, but rather rampant drug usage, the answer remains yes. If she continues to maintain contact with this person, she will be forced to face the possibility of divorce in addition to everything else. I have informed her of this. To what age are the children? 9, 12, and 14 are the numbers. Update post 2, the 30th of April, 2023, 10 days out from the first post. See my profile for further information. But I was the one who was driving my wife to the rehabilitation clinic that we had decided upon. While we were on our way, she was yelling at me, telling me that she couldn't believe I was humiliating her in such a manner, describing what was going on with the lads and forcing her to send a message to her dealer slash so-called buddy that they would no longer be hanging out together or using together. The fact that she does not want to leave, the fact that I am a dominating monster, the fact that I threatened her with divorce and that I would take primary custody of the boys, and the fact that I considered myself to be mad. I continued to take it until I was unable to take any more, at which point I yelled at her. I just kept taking it forever. I screamed that the woman I met would have preferred to die rather than have a pillhead junkie around her sons, that she disgusted me, and that I don't know if she understood how much I was considering leaving her. I also said that I do not know if she knew how much love I had for her. She was acting as if she hadn't brought drugs into our home around me, a former addict myself, and around our boys. This was not because of the addiction itself, rather, it was because of the way she was acting. She was becoming exactly what she had always wept about her mother being, and she was fortunate that I was here to see it before what happened to her happened to her goddamn sons. That I am beginning to despise her for doing that, and that she was becoming exactly what she had always cried about her mother being. Even though it makes me sick to my stomach to say it, 
it was a pleasant feeling to watch it settle in and see how far she had gone. It was enjoyable to see her come to terms with the fact that her actions have repercussions. In spite of the fact that she continued to cry, she continued to say that I was abusive or anything, and I had the impression that her heart wasn't in it after that. I intend to consult with a legal professional. Despite the fact that I do not wish to divorce her, I am uncertain about the state of our relationship following this event. Despite the fact that I am aware that my behavior was inappropriate, I do not feel guilty about it. It is precisely this aspect that causes me to consider the possibility that I should no longer be married to her, both for her sake and for my own. I have no idea what more to do, and I am so angry that she brought C4 into every aspect of our lives. I don't know what else to do. Remarks that are pertinent, I am convinced that I will have to divorce her, and the thought of doing so is destroying me. I do not wish to do so. Despite the fact that I still love her, I am unsure whether or not I can trust myself with her and also whether or not I can refrain from using myself. This week, I have been more near to experiencing a relapse than I have ever been before. Third post update, May 12, 2023, 12 days after the last post and 3 weeks after the initial post. Please be aware that this is a rant post before you continue reading. This is not something that I would ever do under normal circumstances but I am completely fine and I need to get this poison out of my head before I take it with me to any other place. She had been unfaithful. My acquaintance who does drugs emailed me footage of her dancing and grinding on this hick-looking individual who gives off an awful appearance. Goddamn, I am completely ruined. The boys are going to be staying with my mother for a few days, and I will be vacationing from work for the following week. My anger is at an all-time high. I have never been so enraged in my entire life. She was so incredibly arrogant that she sent it. In the event that you are unaware that she can find someone else to replace you, the free ride comes to an end here. The last thing I want to say is that I'm done. I hope she can get Medicaid for her suboxone. I quickly preserve the tape, and I am going to consult with a lawyer as soon as possible. Since I want to make sure that I do something correctly, I can't inform anyone just yet. To my great relief, my parents forced me to sign a prenuptial agreement that included a cheating clause that I considered to be harsh at the time. Despite the fact that I have never been cheated on before, I am on the verge of ripping out my goddamn hair. To tell you the truth, I never in a million years imagined that she would turn out to be such despicable. I am unable to deal with this. I do not possess the physical capacity to deal with this. Yesterday evening, I drank for the first time in more than a decade, and I haven't been able to keep food down for the past few days. Then I woke up and had to throw the remainder away since I am on the verge of going into a downward spiral, and my children do not require both of their parents to be in rehabilitation at this time. In all seriousness, I am on the verge of losing my mind. Moreover, you are free to believe whatever you want, but please refrain from sending me private messages in which you suggest that I should remove the posts or that it is inappropriate for me to discuss my personal relationship with my wife. Please don't bother me, this is not going to work. This is the only location where I am able to discuss this topic. Note from the editor, oops, this sheds some light on the problem with the children. The two of my three boys are stepsons, but I adopted them. SL who is connected to who, I adopted two of my sons. They were never able to have a father since their biological father was a complete and utter. In addition to being the youngest of my children, my biological son was born to a girlfriend who is not present in the picture and does not wish to be. My sons are 10, 12, and 14 years old. When we first met, she was working two jobs, but they were both jobs, and I had been looking into finding her a better job while we were working together. As far as the dealer is concerned, she was obtaining the narcotics from her friend who was a female as well as from a few of the guys with whom she had inappropriate relationships. Update post 4, the 19th of July, 2023, three months after the initial post. It is possible for you to read my prior blogs in order to gain a better understanding of the events that led up to this point, nevertheless, the short version is that I was unaware of my wife's addiction until she admitted it and made the decision to seek treatment. During the time that she was in rehabilitation, I was provided with evidence that she had been cheating on multiple occasions and with multiple people. With that on top of everything else and myself nearly slipping back into my addiction due to the stress of the situation, I couldn't stand to even think about her anymore, so I've been working on filing for divorce while she's in rehab. It's not just because she cheated on me, it's also because I've been working on it. And there is no such thing as a healthy relationship that can accommodate that way of thinking. The last time I was alone with her, I raised my voice, and at the time, 
I even believed that she deserved it. As a result, I honestly did not want to be in a room with her again in order to try mediation or counseling. I felt that she deserved it. Of course, I am now aware that what I did was a terrible thing that may be construed as abuse, this is even another reason why I should not be in a relationship with this woman. I relocated all of her possessions to our guest room, with the exception of the pills that I discovered concealed in her bedside table. After taking photographs of those in their hiding place, I flushed them down the toilet. Additionally, I was able to remove her from my credit cards and bank account. I had a conversation with my sons, and I tried my best to explain the issue to them without making their mother sound bad. They appeared to comprehend the situation rather well. Whether they are my biological children or not, I have no intention of abandoning them. They are my boys. After that, she returned to her house. As a birthday present, my mother paid for the boys to attend camp, and they are still away at camp at this place. From the minute I picked her up at the facility until the moment I drove her home, she remained silent and kept her eyes fixed on the ground. When we arrived at our house, I took her to the guest room in a stealthy manner, but she did not take it well and began screaming before she had even had a chance to take the first step. I allowed her to become comfortable over the course of the subsequent couple of weeks, and despite my cautious neutrality, I am aware that she was able to sense that something was going to happen. On the other hand, I wanted to be as fair as possible and give her some time to get acclimated to being out before I said anything, because that was one of the things that I personally disliked about leaving rehabilitation. Because everything was coming at me at such a rapid pace, I did not have time to take a breath. Last but not least, I requested that she have a seat on the couch, and then I started explaining to her that I do not believe I am capable of continuing to be married to her, and that I am seeking a divorce. I should have understood that her reaction was completely inappropriate. During the time that I was speaking, she did not utter a single word, all she did was nod and cry quietly. I stated to her that I had no intention of causing her any harm, but that I was unable to continue being married to her. I also suggested that perhaps the two of us should concentrate on being the best parents that we can be. I assured her that I had no intention of evicting her and that the divorce process ought to be straightforward due to the fact that we had a prenuptial agreement. It should be safe for her to start looking for work at this time, and if she has a job, I will assist her in finding an apartment and a place to live. She got up and walked to her room as soon as she heard this. This conversation could wait, I reasoned, because I believe that she must have been feeling stressed at the time. When it was time for dinner, she did not appear, and I took some time to consider whether or not I should leave her alone. Over time, I made the decision to knock on the door and inquire as to whether or not she was hungry. In a nutshell, she had either smuggled drugs into my house in some way, or she had a cache of pills that I was unaware of, and she ended up taking an excessive amount of them. She had been dead for a few minutes while she was in the ambulance, and she is currently in a coma that was induced by medical professionals since the doctors are unsure of the extent of the damage that she has caused to her brain. The things that they have said make me feel like a complete and utter monster. I feel as though I am the lowest of the low. As if I ought to have simply kept quiet, as if I ought to have just dealt with it, as if I ought to have just remained silent and avoided the situation. It breaks my heart that I am the one accountable for this. I may not have the same affection for her as I did in the past, but I am filled with an overwhelming sense of compassion for everything that she has been through. It's causing me to die. I have not yet informed my sons, and I am considering delaying the announcement until they return from camp. This will allow them to have some additional time to themselves without having to worry about additional things on top of everything else. Please accept my apologies for the grammar and other errors. In spite of the fact that I do not have the energy to edit this, I felt the need to get this off my chest. Observations that are pertinent, where is her family? She does not have a large number of living relatives, and the ones that she does have are not in contact with her. This is not my story to share. She has other pals but I am unable to determine which of them were enabling because they are all aware of what is taking place. I sent a message to all of her friends aside from the dealer, but she is aware of it now. Based on the texts that she has sent to me, I am aware that she has not yet arrived at the hospital. It is possible that she is under the impression that I would dismiss her, which is something that I would be tempted to do, if I were to be completely honest. On a regular basis, she gets visited by a couple of her other pals. It is true that she does not communicate with her mother, which is odd given that her mother is addicted to drugs and has been abusive toward her. The others argued on a regular basis that she need to visit her mother, and on two separate occasions, they even took her sons to her mother's house without first obtaining her permission. 
One more clarification regarding the children, yes, I have adopted the two oldest children who are not mine biologically. This is due to the fact that all of our children come from past relationships within our family. At that time, why did I choose to do it? It was my intention to carry it out while she is in rehabilitation, but, my therapist advised me to reconsider, and I did so. When I found out that someone had been cheating on me, I was very enraged. I had to want to take her stuff to the house of her dealer and leave them there, but I was aware that this would be inappropriate. I was aware that after my wrath subsided, I would come to regret my decision. Consequently, at this point, all I want is to get the divorce process started and finished as quickly as possible so that I can start putting the pieces of my life back together and moving on with my life. In addition to that, I didn't want to lead her on, and I could tell that she was aware of something that was about to happen at any moment because I can't even tolerate it when she touches me anymore. On a physical level, it makes me sick. I could have clenched my teeth, closed my eyes, and allowed her to carry out her plan to end her own life if I had known that she was going to take her own life. But if I'm being completely honest, even after what she did, I am aware that I am unable to accommodate that. I still found myself wanting to start fights and to yell, and I am aware that I am not a strong enough person to be in a relationship with someone who hurt me so much, who disrespected me, my home, and my children so much, and who took my own previous experiences with drugs into relatively little consideration, to the point where she brought them into my home directly under the nose of both myself and my children. Sorry for the pun. For the sake of my own mental health, this is that amount of kindness that I am able to afford to provide to her at this point in time. Sorry, comments on the 24th of July, five days later, and I am not up yet. In response to the recommendations made by a few of the commenters, I went to talk to my sons about whether or not they would like to visit their mother. I did my best to describe the issue in a manner that was suitable for their age, and I inquired as to whether or not they desired to see her. Even though they all promised to see her at some point, the oldest one was only interested in going to show his support for his brothers. It is my intention to have a conversation with him about the animosity that he is starting to feel toward his mother, and I am concerned about it. I don't want to tell him how he should feel, nor do I want to tell him that his feelings are negative and incorrect. Getting kids into treatment was something I was already working on, but I'm going to speed up that process. There have been several photographs and videos of her dancing on men and acting inappropriately with them since that post, which is evidence of her cheating. I have not blocked the buddy since she has supplied me a substantial quantity of evidence that she has been unfaithful in order to support the divorce. It is possible that you are perplexed because the video was shared to you by her female buddy, considering that the guy she was dancing on in that post was a male. If my terminology was incorrect, please accept my apologies. I am an addict in my own CSA which was caused by my uncle, and I have also experienced general abuse from both of my parents. Yes, I am aware that trauma is the pathway that leads to addiction. The relationship between us is much better now, but growing up was a really difficult experience for us. During my rehabilitation, we went to counseling. Despite the fact that I am unable to tell for certain what caused her to begin using, I am aware that she had a difficult upbringing and much more difficult teenage years. In addition, regardless of whether or not I identify as a woman, if I discover that my wife was engaging in sexual practices with other women, I would likewise consider this to be an act of infidelity. No, I did not obtain any regular sex tapes from her, despite the fact that she was engaging in other sexually unacceptable behaviors. I'd prefer not get into it anymore, but I believe you can understand what I'm trying to say. The last update will be made after February 13, 2024. It has been seven months since my wife passed away. You probably already know the reason why I haven't posted in a while, but I apologize for the delay. No, I wasn't in the mood to do it. Because the moment she woke up, we both started crying and talking, and we didn't stop for days. I know that everyone said that she was trying to manipulate me or that she was trying to make me stay with her. However, if I'm being completely honest, even if that was the truth, it didn't matter because we both started crying and talking. She returned to rehabilitation for a short period of time, then emerged, and we participated in both couples' treatment and individual therapy for both of us. I had thought that the crazy would be done and that we would just be happy again. She appeared to be cheerful, and she appeared to be starting to feel better. Because, to tell you the truth, I was terrified of how everyone would react, I decided not to update at that time. Getting shouted at is not something that I am good at. She assured me that she would not hesitate to make contact with me in the event that something occurred or if there was anything that she needed to discuss with me. Despite the fact that everything was going well, 
I asked myself if there were any indications that she would return or that she had never stopped, and the truth is that there were none. Exactly nothing, with the exception of the fact that she passed away on her friend's couch after taking an overdose at her friend's house while I was working. It took the friend's boyfriend to persuade her to call for an ambulance because she was not even interested in doing it. I do not believe that either of them were caught on that particular day, but, I am aware that she was picked up for selling a few of months ago, as stated in the newspaper. Everyone was asking me to go to the police, and to tell you the truth, in all honesty, I probably ought to have done so. However, given the way the police behave, it wouldn't have been very effective. Since that time, I have been veering off uncontrollably. Despite the fact that I had quit smoking before I got married because she was allergic to the scent, I started smoking again. When I say hate it now, I mean the scent, but the hand-to-mouth is a pleasant experience. My sons are participating in therapy and are doing as well as they possibly can deal with the loss of their father. Most of the time, the eldest is the one who is angry, but the younger two talk a lot about her. Despite the fact that I am grateful that he does not appear to be interested in discussing it with his brothers, I always allow him to share his thoughts with me, even when it causes me to feel a great deal of sadness. It is possible that everyone in this room has some understanding of who my wife was, but there is one thing that you will never be able to deny, and that is the amount of love that she had for our children. They brought her the utmost happiness and were the most important item in her life. I am missing her, and I miss her so terribly that it is difficult for me to breathe. I miss her so much. The fact that there is no music playing when I get home is something that I despise. Because I despise the silence so much, there are days when I sit in the car and simply cry because I know she won't be there. I do this because I know she won't be there. It hurts too much to even consider getting rid of her toothbrush or perfume, so I haven't even been able to clean out her half of the bathroom yet. I haven't even been able to clean out the entire bathroom. For reasons that are self-evident, I haven't had the want to write, but there is something that seems to be of significance right now, so I shall. The day after tomorrow is Valentine's Day. When I was driving home from work not too long ago, I found myself calculating the cost of flowers. It wasn't until I realized that I have no one to give them to unless I put them on her grave that I realized I was doing it. I can still vividly recall being irritated by the rising cost of roses, which, in retrospect, seemed like such a ridiculous expense. If you have someone that you love, I just wanted to encourage you to treat them with the utmost honor. Tomorrow, for the sake of me, make sure to do something unusually kind for the person you love. It's nothing out of the ordinary, but you might, for example, dance around the living room to your music or read to each other something gentle or enjoyable to demonstrate that you are genuine and that you are definitely present. If Alex were here right now, she would be aggressively bullying me. I am aware that this is such a cliché and corny statement. Howdy! Nevertheless, it is unfortunate that the old Cretans were always correct, life is brief, isn't that a kick in the rear end? Smoking is a pertinent comment. Obviously, I ought to give up smoking. I don't do it in the house since the scent is so strong that it makes me feel sick after a significant amount of time. In all honesty, I only do it in the wee hours of the morning or late at night. I'm thinking about purchasing one of those flavored air ones that are currently available without smoke or anything else, so that I can continue to participate in the hand-to-mouth experience, which I really enjoy and have been missing. Though it's not the finest compromise, it's at least something. Have you tried the assistance for widows on Reddit? Without a doubt, I could. I would like to express my gratitude, I would be grateful for any form of emotional support at this time. When I am around my sons, it is difficult for me to appear emotional because I do not want them to have the impression that they are ever in a position where they are responsible for taking care of me. I have been through enough for the poor children to cause me to lose it for them. In spite of this, they have caught me crying in my car more frequently than I would want to admit because I have been such a mess. The point I'm trying to make is not that I don't want to cry in front of them at all, it's just that I despise the fact that they can see how mess I am. Attending therapy, are you? As someone who has struggled with addiction in the past, I am currently participating in therapy, however, it is a lengthy process. My age has increased by 10 and a year as a result of the entire issue. Cry in front of them for me, as someone whose father went through something similar. It's fine. I can give it a shot, the only problem is that it always makes me feel so guilty. I know I shouldn't, but I always simply say to myself, what are you doing? You're meant to be taking care of them, not the other way around. I despise the idea that they ever feel the need to walk on eggshells around me because I'm too much of a wreck to handle something. I believe that they should be taking care of me. 
It's true, but I'm aware that it's not the best solution. The fact that those are my sons and that I am their father is something that keeps coming up in everyday conversation. For the sake of them, I am meant to be more powerful than this. I don't mean to imply that crying is a sign of weakness or that it is inappropriate, I just don't know how to change the line in my head that says it's okay to cry to it's okay for me to cry. Of course, I am referring about the present moment, after everything that occurred during the burial. Due to the fact that I was such a mess for the first few days following that, my parents came to stay with us since they were worried that I wasn't sleeping. There was no way to prevent it from happening. Such a conversation. Oh, and who is the commenter who wrote the statement about crying that was just above that? Commenter, yeah, you can't help your feelings, but I am sure that your young guy has feels, and when he sees you not showing the same feelings, he may assume that those feelings are wrong. I am sure that your little guy has feelings. However, that might be my own personal baggage. It just stood out to me, but you should do whatever it is that you need to do for yourself, my friend. Oops, I am so grateful to you. In the future, I will remember that. If I'm being completely honest, I hadn't given that much thought, but I can work on improving that. This is the final thought from Oop. Despite the fact that it is extremely challenging for me to refrain from defending her, my therapist was the first person to tell me that when I inquired about my sons. I was told that defending her in front of them would not be of any use, and that the only thing I could do was let them talk. My eldest child is the only one who is truly angry about it, but I have no doubt that my younger two will at some point in the future. Additionally, I am outraged in a helpless manner that is so excruciatingly painful that I can't even bring myself to think about it. Simply because I would have been able to assist her if she had simply communicated with me, and she would still be present. Personally, I am a recovering addict, and although I am aware that I made a great deal of faults with my wife, I can assure you that it seemed like everything was back to normal. We slept in the same bed once more and went on dates together. My entire mind is begging and screaming to know why she would do something like this, but I am unable to accomplish either of those things. I despise it so much because I tried so very hard to stop loving her when she was still alive, but I was unsuccessful. I tried so hard to stop loving her. Then I don't see myself doing any better now that she's gone, and it hurts even more because when other people are angry or say nasty things, I still want to defend her, to explain every tiny reason she had and why it wasn't all her fault. This makes the pain even more intense. Nevertheless, in the end, it is irrelevant whether I do or not because she is no longer here. Because she won't be here, she won't be able to take advantage of that defense, nor will she even notice that I altered my mind. She is not going to be present in order to be appreciated or dismissed. The fact that I still want to do it despite the fact that it seems worthless makes me feel like a.